Welcome back to another episode of Making It Mag interview series. I'm your host, Tally Spencer, and today I have Tamara Bubble with me, who is a singer, artist, and we're going to talk today about her journey in music and how she's navigated to where she is today. So thank you so much for joining. Tamara, how are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Bubble on deck. <laughs> Bubble on deck. I love that. Is Bubble your real last name? Uh, no. So it was given to me. I thought about marrying somebody named Bubble so I could make it official, but no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always laughing and smiling, so it was kind of personality. And then dudes call, it, call me Bubble, too, so it was physical, just kind of all around. Right, right. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, I, I don't imagine how many Bubbles there are out there in the world. <laughs> But <laughs> the one and only. No, so. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a unique name. I feel like it fits you. You have a, a bubbly personality from what Thank I you. Know. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes. So where where are you from? What city are you from? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. I feel like I'm down south, baby now. So I just say East Coast, uh, in North Carolina, but I kinda spent half and half. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm definitely from Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Okay. Mm -hmm. From Brooklyn, got you. And where do you live now? Uh, I'm in Raleigh right now. Raleigh, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. So um, I know your journey into music is kind of new and recent uh, within yeah. the pandemic times, crazy world we're living in. Talk to me, you know, about your background. And uh, before we get into music, I want to know, you know, what were you doing before music? Okay. So um, I have been doing music for maybe like a decade now. I don't like to say those numbers, but... I won't say no age or anything. Mm -hmm. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I've been, I grew up singing in church, so my background is gospel. Uh, I, when I started doing music professionally, though, um, I started rapping. I was singing and rapping, and then the rap kind of took over in terms of what people liked from me. Um, I didn't see success, though, for many, many years. I think maybe the last three to four years is where I started to, to take off. And it was because of the music licensing. Mm -hmm. um, I took a class on it. And then I just started pitching to music supervisors direct and getting my music placed in film and TV, um, commercials, video game promos and stuff like that. And the music took off from there, from the exposure, from the placements, from the money I was receiving from the placements, I was able to reinvest it. Um, I never wanted to be signed to a label. So I thought I had to do it this way anyway, indie. And sync licensing, I knew nothing about. So when I found it, I jumped on it and took it full throttle. So Wow. No, yeah. That's amazing. I know I hear a lot of great things about sync licensing. Everyone kind of says that's where the bag is at when it yes, comes it to is. making music. Yes, I want to get into that for sure. Um, but, you know, in terms of, you know, some of your early beginnings, I know you mentioned you started in the church mm -hmm. um, and your background was kind of in gospel. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about, you know, what... Um, what was the vision behind, you know, pursuing a career in music? Did you want to be a gospel singer or talk to No, me? I actually never, ever, ever in a million years thought I'd be doing music as a career. I thought, like, I was singing the choir. I just grew up singing the choir. Got a big mouth. So they put me in front. They let me do <laughs> solo. <laughs> and I just thought that was that. Um, I just started doing accounting. Um, I took a class in high school. And I was like, oh, I could do this. Num I'm good with numbers, whatever. I got to write a little bit. I can do that. And... I did that. I went to college, got the degree, got the CPA license. I was good. Yeah. And I took a sabbatical, took like a two months off because um, I had enough vacation time saved up. And I just did a bunch of acting and modeling. I still have no idea what made me get into that. But then when I went back to work, I didn't want to do accounting anymore. I like hated it. It like turned the switch off. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just pursuing music ever since. Uh, so that's that's kind of how I found my way. Okay, wow. So accounting to music, those mm -hmm. are two very <laughs> unlikely paths for each other. I, I've seen it though, you know, and it's like something that you think that you love. It's a secure option, you know, especially once you graduate mm -hmm. um, and you have that CPA license. Yep. It's like, you know, secure career. It's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, you know, the passion for music just kind of came through and, you know, made it found its way to you. Yeah. And that was the crazy uh, struggle that I had because I hated accounting with such a passion and I loved music equally so much, but I needed accounting to fund the music. So I had to do both mm. and I do it for a while and I had to do it until I could figure out how to pivot and do music full time and sync licensing took me to that level. Mm. So Okay. I'm forever grateful for accounting because I still use it in my own business and my my licensing agency and all that. But man, 
I don't know where I would be without it, but I definitely did not want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's those experiences that kind of push you to the the forefront and it's the least likely endeavors that yep. lead you to your path, you know, but yep. I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that you still are grateful for accounting and that you still used it. Um, what qualities do you feel like you learned in that professional world of accounting that you carry into your music career today? Oh man, even just the, when you get uh, payments in and placements and all that stuff. I'm just so organized and I'm very detail oriented. I know it's because of the accounting. I know it's from mm -hmm. even just professional emails like that stuff. When I reach out to music supervisors, just randomly never met them before cold emails. They're so targeted and they're so exactly what the music supervisor needs that I'll get responses to those type of emails. I know I only got that from like just business school and just knowing how to be professional, even with strangers or whatever. Like, so there's so much of it. And then just the accounting for me to do my own taxes. I don't I don't got to worry about the accounting guy ripping me off because I'm my guy. So I got to just make sure I'm using all my little... <laughs> I need those Donald Trump tax cuts to make sure that I'm good on that front. But yeah, so there's, there's tons of benefits. Just even understanding contracts. Like, I feel like all the classes I took in my accounting degree came into play from the marketing, especially doing music. The marketing, the uh, business law, like all of that stuff still is active in my music career, which is crazy to me. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad to hear that, you know, and I think um, especially in this day and age, we are often told that, you know, to pursue a career in music, you don't necessarily need to have a background in education, let's say, or a, a professional career, you know, because it's based in the arts and based in creativity. Um, what would you kind of say to that statement? <laughs> so your experiences are a little different, but you know, what's your opinion on that overall? Yeah, uh, I, I feel like the reason that I failed for so long was that I wasn't up on the music business. So even though I had a business degree, I feel like I needed to learn the music business. And I think that's where most artists will save so much more time. Like I, I know people think that, oh, if the song goes viral, then I'm good. It's just going to take off. No, somebody else is going to get your money because they're going to know how to do something that you should have already had in place. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where having the, the business degree and even learning about the music business and how that works, too, will just benefit you, um, you know, as an artist, especially as an indie artist. You're out here. Yeah, right. Exactly. As an independent <laughs> artist, too. Like you said, you have to kind of fend for yourself. A lot of times it's just you or you yeah. and your manager. And nine times out of ten, you're figuring things out as you go. Right. The scary thing about being an indie artist is feeling like, oh, I'm just an artist. I just make music. No, you're actually the company. You actually do all the jobs that a label or that a publisher or that another entity would do on your behalf. The admin, all the paperwork, all the registrations. You do. You are signing up to do all of that when you say, I just want to make music. I'm just an indie artist or I'm unsigned. So I think it, when artists start to realize that, they'll know, okay, business does come first. I'm a whole entire company out here. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> that's a good point that you made too. So I'm curious to know, like, what have been some of the challenges or things that you've had to learn along the way, uh, despite, you know, being educated and having that degree and understanding the business of it? Yeah, uh, I guess basic things or like just copyrights and stuff. Like, I think artists feel like, oh, that won't happen to me. Oh, they won't steal it. I'm to the point where I'm so protected now in terms of my copyrights and stuff. Like, I want somebody to steal the music. Because <laughs> <laughs> then I know we're going to break bread. <laughs> and I'll take those writer credits. <laughs> right. I'll take that placement. I just want somebody big to steal it. Somebody with money so I can get some of their money. And then, <laughs> But on top of that, just like, oh, man, the, the taxes, the... Oh, there's just so much as an indie artist, the promo, the rollout, the releasing, all those things that um, I guess artists take for granted or they definitely do if they're on a label. Um, um, so just a lot of things in business. I hope I'm answering your question, yeah, um, but a lot of, of things in business that artists take for granted. Um, you have to learn how to do those things. You have to learn it quickly on the job, like ASAP, as soon as possible. In addition to continuing to be creative, that's kind of the juggle too. Like you got to have that creative side of you, but then you also got to have the business side. Yeah. Have the creative side um, and continuing to be creative. And like you said, having the, um, the business aspect of it too. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, did you have a team at all kind of helping you with this or was it mostly just you? Me find me. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it was just me. <laughs> wow. Did you try to look for a team or uh, you just pretty much like in wanting to take control of everything yourself anyway? So 
I feel like early on when I first started doing music, I wanted to, I was like, oh, I just need to break bread. Let me pay this person. Let me let them do it. Let me pay so that I could try to still be the artist. I tried to outsource everything and I got scammed a lot. So I had to reel it back in and like figure out oh, who I'm dealing with. Let me be able to read people better. Let me learn how to do this stuff so I'll know when they trying to be janky or funny or something like that. Um, and I just kind of learned through trial and error and loss of lots of money that <laughs> I need to learn the business. I need to learn who I'm dealing with and proceed that way. And so I kind of took a step back and I started to do a lot more stuff myself just to understand it and see if some if it was something I was talented at. Like, um, for example, just graphic arts. I used to outsource that a lot. And then with some people online, you know, you hire somebody to do a cartoon type thing. There's, they don't do them. They just got some fake pictures up there and they take your little money or whatever. So you'd be like, oh, no, let me see if I can do this clip art. Let me see if I can do this little thing. Let me find this little app. And then you start doing stuff. You're like, oh, this actually looked decent. Somebody think I hired somebody to do this. So then I know I'm good at that. The production. I, I outsource production, of course, all the time. And then I started to produce and I saw I could actually do it. And I saw people actually like what I produce. So it's just things like that. You start to pick up and see where your skills are. The stuff you still trash at, you got to outsource it still. But the things that you're good at, you know, you start to hone in and realize the how the entire thing comes together for an artist. Right. No, yeah, exactly. Um, I think, like you said, the biggest thing is pretty much learning it yourself and being able to execute it yourself as well because like you said earlier you know you are the business you are the company and mm -hmm. if you don't have your paperwork in order people are going to take advantage of that for sure and and i'll say too even with, with sync licensing it's even more so important to have your business in order especially like the split sheets and stuff that's it will you will see a immediate financial impact when you miss out on a placement when you miss out on 40 or fifty thousand, all because you didn't have any, your paperwork in order and by the time you got it ready they were already moved on to another song. So with sync, it's like you definitely have to have that stuff going into it in place, like no unclear samples, all of that stuff. You have to have that stuff taken care of from the beginning before you even start pitching music because you definitely don't want to lose money because of it. So, yeah, no, you're right. Um, what have been some of the highlights of your career so far? Talk to me about some of the good stuff. Oh, man, I've had two songs on Insecure. I have had music in a Disney film, Raya and the Last Dragon, well, in the trailer for it. Um, I've had a bunch of HBO placements, Netflix, a lot of foreign films and U.S. films, too. Um, I have some, too, that I can't announce yet. So that's always the exciting <laughs> for me. Um, let me see what else. And I have started to get other artist placements. I should say that, too. I have a sync licensing agency, for goodness sake. And I maybe have about 400 artists or so on my roster now. So I'm pitching my music and theirs. And the placements are coming in, and I'm grateful. So, um, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Uh, that's huge, honestly. It's, you know, it's like you found a caveat, you know, specifically for you. And mm -hmm. um, getting some huge placements on things like that is I'm yes. sure a lot of art, artists dreams and you know aspire to to kind of do that absolutely um, and yeah, then what, find, like getting fans from it like when I right. get the placement then I just a bunch of new people come oh I found you on All American oh I found you on this and so it's dope to get that like because yeah. I didn't have to pay money to reach those people so exactly exactly what advice would you have for artists who kind of want to break into that space uh so i wrote a book actually because i had a ton of advice and i also am one of those like lift as i climb i never want to get somewhere and look down on the situation that i once was in and i also knew how many times i got scammed and how much struggle i did and like i felt like a lot of artists if they went through what i went through probably would have quit so i was like let me put this book out so to help them shorten their distance to, or their journey or whatever at least help a little bit or any way I can if they never heard of sync licensing and they're indie artists they definitely should know about it because that's that's the bread and butter for mm -hmm. indies I mean if you major yeah you can go tour and make 30,000 a night but if you're indie you're probably gonna need to do this placement get your 30,000 in, in one day or 30,000 right. in 30 seconds so right right okay what's the name of the book let's hear it. oh oh yeah from sync to superstar <laughs> from sync to superstar I love yes. that it's uh, available on Kindle, Amazon, the audio book. It's on Audible, iTunes. It's on all of that. So Okay. Yep. Awesome. I got to check that out. That's definitely something I feel like I could learn more about. But it's not something that's, you know, widely even discussed or yep. shared knowledge for. So you really have to kind of do the work to learn about it. 
Well, I think it's because people feel like, oh, if I tell this, then these people are going to come and take my bread. But it's so many opportunities. There's so much. Let's look how much TV show is out here. How many commercials? Every time you see a commercial, that's somebody money if you hear music in it. Every time you see a TV show and there's music playing in the background, either the composer got paid or an artist because they licensed the music. And a lot of the budgets, there's so much content, so much Amazon, Netflix, streaming platforms. The budgets are lowered. So they may not always be able to, to afford a major artist song. They can't get a Beyonce song every time. So come get my song because i am make sure you can afford it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, now that's true. Like you said, it's so many opportunities. So many TV shows, movies. Yeah. Literally coming out all the time. So um, it's uh, there's room. Like there's money to be made. Like I just wish more people knew about it because I feel like they're, they're like fishing for whose music. It, you just need cleared music. You need split sheets in order. You just need your paperwork in order. You need to get the music to the music supervisor. And it's money. Mm -hmm. Got you. Okay. Paperwork in order. I heard that. I, I think that's a great. <laughs> Um, resource, and I'm glad that you plugged your book because whoever mm -hmm. is going to be watching this interview, they're going to be getting some gems. Sure. I hope they, I hope they do read it because I do have strategy in there that I'm using currently. It's not even like I'm gonna blow up and then tell you how I did it, and then those methods gonna be outdated. No, I'm telling you now what I'm doing now. Come meet me at the top. That's that's what that book is. Right. Um, Come meet me at the top. I love that. We need more of that mentality. Yep. Yeah, in the industry. Okay, cool. So given that um, we're officially almost in quarter four of the year, what mm -hmm. are some of the rest of your, your plans for the year? What can we look forward to from you? Um, I just plan to create more music and get it placed. And my goal is ultimately, like, that's why I titled the book From Sync to Superstar, because the, the strategies that I lay out in the book is to eventually, if things go super, super duper well, be a Beyonce at one point, <laughs> at some point. So um, I, I definitely, if a song takes off, I'm going to tour um, nationally, internationally, however big the record goes, I'm going to go with it. But the strategy now is to get the placements and get the exposure and continue to reinvest. And it's, you know, it's a, it's a process. So I'm here for the long game and yeah, bubble on deck. <laughs> that was on deck okay well that's amazing thank you so much for sharing some gems and some knowledge with us um, of course really excited to you know continue to hear your music and looking forward to more placements from you um absolutely yeah I thank you for having me yes i think that's everything that we covered so um nope. unless there's anything else you wanted to put us on the reader on or plug us let us know where we can uh, follow you on social media Oh, yeah, definitely. So best place to start is my official website, TamaraBubble.com. That's T-A-M-A-R-A-B-U-B-B-L-E. Um, I'm on all social media, literally all of it, TikTok, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Tamara you Bubble. <laughs> you have to be right. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be as much as I can. Um, so you can definitely find me there. The, the book official website is from sync to superstar.com. And my licensing agency is for goodnesssync.com. So yeah hit me okay amazing <laughs> well thank you so much tamara it was a pleasure speaking with you yes likewise thank you <laughs>